What's up everybody and welcome back to Ben's Big Drive. Now let me lay out a scenario for you guys. You've been watching form videos all week. You've thrown up and down your local soccer field at least a thousand times and you're 100% sure that you've eliminated all of the off-axis torque in your swing. Now you go to your local tournament, you step up to the first tee and Joey X baseball player casually out throws you by about 100 feet. Now how is it that after all of that form work, throwing smooth, not hard, nose angle practice, etc., that a casual player steps up and naturally bombs harder than you've ever thrown. Now for the longest time, I thought it was just the disc golf gods that shine their light of distance on some people, and some people were meant to be bombers, and some people weren't. Well, after some intensive research, I think I found the one thing that everybody that throws 400 feet does, no matter how good their form is, and I'm here to share it with you guys. Bum, bum, bum. Now there are so many fine motor skills that go into a good backhand throw for consistency, accuracy, and control, but I'm convinced that there is one thing that everybody that can throw 400 feet plus does no matter how good their form is, and that's that their hips are completely engaged throughout their throw. So this is why natural athletes with athletic experience can throw the disc far because they've learned in other sports how to use their hips to make an athletic motion. Now combine that with good backhand form and you'll be unstoppable. Now, how do you engage your hips in your throw? Let's dive in. Now, the key to engaging your hips in your backhand throw is all in your pull through, and more specifically, it's in your pull through timing. Now, the only way that your hips can be engaged in your backhand shot is if your hips are rotating ahead of the disc. Now, when your hips are rotating ahead of the disc, your hips are creating tension in your elbow and are already pulling that disc along with a ton of power before you engage any of these muscles in your arm. Now the other side of that coin is if your hips are rotating with the disc, and if your hips are rotating with the disc, they're not really rotating the disc at all, they're really just rotating to, like T-O-O, -O, as in like also. Now how do we make sure that our hips are pulling in front of the disc and pulling the disc along, not just rotating with the disc? Now the answer to that question is to pull the disc through slowly, lagging behind the rotation of our hips until we feel that jolt of acceleration that your hips turning will cause to your elbow. It'll pull that elbow through. And then once you feel that tension creating, building on that power, really using your elbow and your tricep to pull through and whip that disc forward. Now this is just so important when it comes to adding power to our backhand throw because your hips are some of the strongest muscles in your body and everyone that can throw 400 feet is doing so because they've learned to lag that disc behind the power of their hips and to incorporate all of that power into their throw. Now I hope that at this point in your backhand form journey, you've already heard that from the peak of your reach back, you should be pulling through slowly and accelerating to the release point. Now I wanna show you why that is and why that's so important to having a great throw which incorporates your hips. Now here's an analogy to make this all make sense. Think about throwing the disc like an Olympic relay race. Now a relay race is different than every other track and field competition because it doesn't matter who crosses the finish line first, it matters who crosses the finish line first with the baton and it has to pass through every single member of the team before it gets to the finish line. Now what's the key to a great relay race team? Every single runner on the team is perfectly in sync. They're waiting their turn to grab the baton, baton. They're waiting their turn to grab the baton and make a smooth transition and then turn on the jets and then pass it off to the next teammate. Now in this scenario, the runners are the different parts of your body you use to throw a backhand throw and the baton is the disc. Just like the baton, the disc has to start at the starting line, which is the peak of your reach back and finish at the finish line, which is your release point. Now imagine you're watching a relay race, the whole team's ready to go, the first guy's at the starting block, he's got the baton, the gun goes off, and every runner on the team takes off full speed immediately. Now there's no doubt that everybody on that team is going incredibly fast down the track, but now that team has no chance of winning because they've left the baton behind. The baton can only travel as far as the first runner can take it because every single one of their teammates have left them behind. Now this is exactly what happens when you start your pull through before your hips rotation or at the same exact time as your hips rotation. And although you might be compact and balanced and your nose angle might be right and all these other great things, the disc isn't going very far, 
because your arm is the only thing that's moving that disc, that's moving that baton along in the relay race because all of your other beautiful muscles have started the race at the same exact time and left it behind. So instead of giving the baton to your arm and having it be the only thing that influences how far that you throw, you need to make sure that every single part of your body is involved in your disc golf throw. And the easiest way to do this is within timing the hips. Now, instead of just more standing here and showing you, let's send it off to Ben in the booth and get some concrete examples of what this looks like in practice. What's up guys, Ben in the booth here. As always, we're gonna start with the bad example first. And what I want you to look for in this video is watch how my arm and my pull through comes through in sync or rotating exactly with my hips when I go to pull through. Let's watch it through in full speed. You can just tell there's something about this throw that doesn't really look powerful. Now let's break it down in slow motion. All right, now let's go through it in slow motion. And what I really want you to focus on is the arm and the pull through timing in relation to the hips. So we're going through, reach back is still a little early, hips are still turned back to this point, so we're all loaded up, coming through, hips are opening, my arm is still behind my hips at this point, so we're good here, then we're coming to the power pocket, you can see how my elbow in relation to my right knee, now it's getting closer to the same angle as the hips. So remember, we're trying to have our hips go before the rotation of our arm so that we get that snap that's built up from the hips. But in this example, you can quickly see that right here, I'm still in the power pocket. I haven't gone to extend or to snap that disc out yet. And my right arm is already past the rotation of my right hip. So at this point, even though we created all of this good energy here, at this point, I've lost all of it because now my arm is rotating ahead of my hips. So any pull that my hips were giving to the disc is now gone. Now the key moment here where everything went wrong is not here. Everything's good. The hips are still in front of the arm. The hips are pulling it along, but it's here. When I start to muscle up and I start to rush through my throw, and you can see that in this frame, my arm is parallel, if not in front of my hips. So none of that power is exerted into the disc. So now let's go to a good example of what it looks like when your hips are in front of that pull and they're really engaging all of that power into your disc. All right, now let's dive into the better example. I think you can tell in this one pretty immediately that it just looks more athletic and more powerful, but here's at full speed. Uh, something about it. Well, all right, now let's dive in slow motion. All right, so we're coming through, still reaching back a little bit early. I'm still working on that. But at this point, my hips are still loaded backwards, getting ready to throw, build up all that power. I planted, and now my hips are starting to turn. Look at this point where my hips are almost all the way 90 degrees to the target, and I haven't started to fully engage my arm muscles at this point. Now you can see that my arm is starting to bend a little bit. That's because at this point, what you need to do is let that hip turn naturally bring that disc softly into the power pocket. Now I reach back a little high here, which is why you see this dip, and it's gonna create a little bit of nose up. But the point here is that watch the hips, they're faced a little bit backwards. We haven't pulled through. Now they're parallel, still haven't gotten to that power pocket. Now they're beginning to turn and that disc is still lagging back behind, which means that all of that force that's created from the rotation of the hips is now pulling my elbow rather than just going along beside it. So this is gonna create a ton of power and result in a way snappier throw. So in between this frame and this frame is the power pocket, but you can see at this point, I'm starting to extend my arm from the power pocket and I'm starting to go through and snap and release that disc. So here's the main thing to look for. Here, I'm getting into the power pocket and my hips have already rotated pretty much forward and that means that it's dragging the disc behind it adding all of that power to the throw now when we get to this frame you can see that my hips barely moved from here to here because they're already almost all the way rotated but my arm goes a lot farther using that power of the hips and now I'm beginning that extension and snap into the disc behind all of the power of my hips so you can tell how much faster and stronger that disc comes out in this example than the last now let's overlay them just to drive that point home one more time all right here are both examples timed together now the one on the left is where the hips are not engaged and the one on the right is the better throw where the hips are engaged so it's actually kind of incredible how similar these throws look but how different they were in practice the one on the right went about 
about 60 to 70 feet further than the one on the left and the only real difference is when you get to this frame and these frames here you can see how fast i've started to pull through on the left because my hips are in the same position in both frames but look how different my arm is relative to the position of my hips on the left here i'm already almost all the way caught up with my hips when at the same time after i plant on the right that disc is still way far back and extended all the way waiting on the power for the hips so let's move forward a little bit on the right, I'm starting to dip a little bit, but that's a result of a high reach back. But on the left, I'm already almost all the way rotated. Again, my arm is in front of my hips. And on the right, my arm is lagging behind those hips, waiting to use that power to explode forward. Here, we've already released the disc on the left. And on the right, all of that power is still waiting behind for the extension and is whipping through that disc with the power of my hips. And it's going much further. So this is why you've heard time and time and again that muscling up is robbing all of your distance. What muscling up does is it takes a great well-timed relay race in which a good powerful throw is passed from your feet to your hips, to your core, to your shoulder turn, to your elbow, to your wrists, and then the disc. It takes all of that and it says, I'm just gonna give the baton to my arm and I'm gonna yuck it as far as I can. So in my own field work, the best way that I figured out to explain this to people is to not consciously lag the disc behind because if you're out here in your practice holding that disc unnaturally back as your arm tries to pull through, what you're gonna do is you're gonna close off this angle from your shoulder to your elbow and it's gonna be less than 90 degrees. And what that's gonna do is gonna create rounding and grip locking. You're gonna see all of your shots go way to the right. What I would recommend that you do when you're trying to lag that disc behind the power of your hips is that you're not forcefully holding the disc behind you but you're naturally not engaging these arm muscles and you're just holding that disc out in place. And when your hips go to turn, you're naturally gonna create this 90 degree angle from your shoulder to your elbow to your wrist to the disc. So watch this, none of my arm muscles are engaged. I'm not pulling with my triceps, I'm just turning my hips. Reach back, turning my hips. None of my tricep muscles are engaged right here. And this is how we want to get into the power pocket. We want to save all of that beautiful tricep energy for when we go to pull forward the disc after our hips have begun to rotate our body. That means that we're gaining the speed that our hips are giving to our elbow without even trying in our elbow. And then once we get to here, you're absolutely snapping forward as fast as you can towards your line and towards the target. I hope that this video demystifies why some natural born athletes are so good at putting every single inch of their body into their throw. And the next time you step up to a tee pad, 400 feet ain't so far away. I don't know about you, but I like making the disc go really far. And I love shooting really low rounds and winning tournaments and beating my friends. So if that's you too, subscribe to the channel for more forum videos like this one, disc golf tips, and my journey to becoming a professional disc golfer. That's it for this one, and follow along for more of Ben's Big Drive. Berton.